Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool jukebox repair video for you today. If you haven't seen our other ones on this particular jukebox, go check them out. The links will be down below. So we've been working on this Rock Ola 490 jukebox, and uh, we got the thing playing in the first two videos, and now we're up to the point where I'm going to uh, take apart the gripper arm, oil it, and put it back together. So I figured since that's what's wrong with like all of them maybe I'll I'd videotape some of that I guess it's not really videotaping anymore is it I guess I would uh, record some of that so uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it and this basically fixes the number one problem with Rockola jukeboxes and it's kind of particular to Rockolas I, the, the AMI jukeboxes don't seem to have the same problem maybe some of the old 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 ones do but the problem is the uh, either it's either the original grease or people have sprayed WD-40 on the gears over the years and since the stuff moves in and out it's got pistons and stuff it gets all jammed up and the stuff won't work now a lot of times if you get a box that's been sitting a long time it won't work at all I mean it won't even move so the motor tries to turn the gears and there's a little thing that goes on if it's all gummed up it'll try to turn it and it'll just kind of lock in place so this is uh, it's not preventative maintenance but this will fix most of your uh, mechanism issues on any Rockola now you may have it mounted in your system like this or it may be mounted the other way around where the the gripper bow is on this side but it's the same thing and I'm not an expert or anything but I've, I've messed with probably 10 or 12 of these Rockolas over the years and I've done uh, three of them in the last couple weeks so this is the third one that I've had to take apart and do this on and I'm getting a little bit better at it but it looks like a really big deal but it's not that big of a problem once you start messing with it so I'm going to show you how to do it show you all the steps involved and I'm going to uh, tell you at the end of the video how long it took me so the number one thing I would suggest to people is if you do decide to do this don't go halfway like don't take it apart and then leave it apart and think oh I'll come back to it it'll never get done we buy we buy games and stuff from people all the time where they took a bunch of stuff apart considered that like a job well done and then never put the stuff back together so don't do that so if you're gonna attempt this anybody can do it but it's gonna take you a few hours so if you don't have three or four hours to screw around with it don't take it apart um, we bought a bunch of arcade games off a guy one time where he had went around he had about a dozen arcade games and he'd went around and took taken the monitors out of all 12 of them and laid them in the floor in front of the game and then because the reason he did that was because he was going to go and do 12 cap kits you know to, to make all 12 monitors look nice and that's a good idea but it just doesn't work very good that way if you're going to work on something work on just that thing until you get it done put back together and then you can move on to the next thing so our our next thing that we need to do is we need to disassemble this and then put it back together so I'll show you uh, how we do it and uh, I'm there's probably better ways to do it but this is just the way that that uh, that we usually take care of it now the way we used to do it and the way a lot of people do it the way we actually did this one at first is you can pour oil all over the damn thing and work it a little bit and move it like see I see it's got a little play in it you can mess with it and pull the piston in and out and pour oil all over everything and basically you'll get oil in there and it will clean it up this one was was uh, jammed up whenever we started but we uh, we poured a bunch of oil on it and let it soak and it it got it where it's moving but the problem is is that you end up with all kinds of little issues like whenever the gear starts turning the gripper bow will lift up a little bit before it grabs the record or it'll do it on this side so whenever it goes to pick up the record all this is turning and it'll stick because of all the gummy grease or oil or whatever it is in it and the so as it turns since this isn't loose enough it'll go and kind of catch itself and then it'll pull in above the record and not be able to grab the record so if you've got that problem uh, if the thing stops every once in a while halfway up or something or if it gets in a weird position or it drops the record it's almost always that you've got a bunch of gunk inside this thing so I'll set up the uh, tripod and uh, we'll work through it a little bit 
So this is the blown up uh, assembly part, whatever, <laughs> assembly diagram from a 484. So it's the same thing, it's just turned around backwards. So this is the back of our machine, this would be the front of our machine. So the whole secret to the whole thing is there is this little plunger that sticks through with a spring all the way through it and into this on the back and this little pin holds it in place. So if you take that pin out, you can take this off, these off, and this off, which that all goes through this, which then allows all of this to come off. And so you only need to take apart this top little bit of stuff from here up. So this, 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 this. So you take all that off, clean it, oil it, and uh, put it back together. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do is take that little pin out. All right, so here's the fun part. I've got this little, uh, I've got this little punch set, but the problem is it kind of needs to come out this way, this way, and there's no way to get to it from the back. So I'm going to try to see what I can do here. Well, looks like I might be getting it. I don't know if it'll go all the way. Let's see if I got any play to mess with it. Come on, you sucker. Come on, you sucker. Bam. All right, so we got our pen out. That is the first piece of the puzzle. Okay, folks, so there's the pin. And so the way I knocked it out was I went and I actually got the right tool. Can you believe that? This is a pin punch, it's called. And it's an eighth of an inch one. This one was a 1 16th. It's a little bit too small. So I got these at Lowe's. And they were $14. Good little tool set. You can pound these damn things out with like a little screwdriver or something, but whenever you do that, what happens is you screw up the end of it, and then you make it where it won't go back in right, or it's all screwed up. So the right way is you use a little pin punch that's the same size as the, what you're knocking out. So it worked perfectly, and like I was saying, it was a little hard to, the way, it, I don't know if you could see it on the camera, but the way I was doing it was I was hitting the back of it with a pair of, a, a, uh, the side of a wrench, uh, I mean a pair of pliers. Um, if you had a back door, or if you could do it from the front, you could just bam, 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 no problem at all. Um, but that's our first piece, so now let's go get the rest of it. All right, so with that pin out, you know what, let me unplug this thing. I just did that with the with it plugged in. Bad idea. Don't do that. So with that pin out, this should pop apart. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe not. I'll take the turntable off. I think we're, I think we're stuck a little bit. There we go. Don't go, like, I just pried it off with those pliers a little bit, but don't go too crazy on it because all this stuff is cast and it will snap. All right, so there's our end piece, all right? Let's see what else that lets us get out. My 
basket isn't completely centered, so that's causing me a little bit of trouble. Got the piston out and with the spring, don't lose the spring. And I might this may give me a little trouble. I might have to turn it a little bit. Let me see if I can get it to get up off of that thing. <laughs> oh, you know what? That might not work because of... Oh, yeah, it should work. All right, so there we go. There's our gripper arm. All right, so here's our parts. So we had the pin was in the very back. It went through this, right? So we pushed it out a little bit, and we we're able to pop the pin, the pin out through the hole. You can see it's just a hole through it. But you can see all the gummy grease how it's got all screwed up. So that goes like that. And then inside of that was this piston, which is what grabs the record, and this spring. And you can see it's all gummy and nasty. And then finally is the record, the, I believe they call this the record bow. Same thing, all greasy and nasty. So we're going to clean, 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 clean that before we put it back in. But we still have to take more stuff off. You could probably get away with just that. I don't know, but we're going to take the other things off too, just for giggles. All right, now I turned the bow up a little bit whenever I took it off. Um, but before you take these gears off, take a picture with it all the way down. Take tons of pictures, people. Pictures are free. I know everybody watching this has a cell phone you can take a picture with. I took pictures. Hell, I even took a video of it. But take pictures so you can tell exactly where it goes back, right? Because uh, you can get it off a little bit. I don't think you can get it way off, but you can get it off a little bit. So we're going to take this little nut off the end. Now, on yours, depending on the model, there may be a little uh, cam here with a little something on it that does something. I have no clue what it does. It, it goes over to the turntable and does something. But um, So you may have that same thing take a picture of it so it's just a little quarter inch bolt screw with a washer now the outside gear usually will come right off but the inside one sometimes you have to turn it to get it out and uh, that's another one I might have to put a little leverage on if I break it you'll have it on video all right, so I have this little hook thing. So on the other side, there is a little hole. You can't see it because it's on the back side. Uh, but on on if it's one on this side, of course, you would see it. But it's just this little dust cap thing. Now, I don't remember if the... Yeah. So I think if I lightly... Hmm... You gotta be careful with this because if you if you break one of these teeth, you are screwed, scu rude. But I think if I lightly tap on that center part, it'll start pushing that shaft out. The funny thing too is the whole thing is on springs. <laughs> it all bounces up and down. I'm just gonna lightly hit this. This may not be the best way to do it, but we'll see. Oh yeah, it moved a little bit. I 
think I'd rather booger up the end of the thing than break one of the teeth off of that gear, you know? There we go. So that gave us a little bit more play. All right, so we got our gear off. That's a very important part. Look how nasty. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, now that next gear, you have to be very careful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you down there so you can see what it looks like. I can't pound this one off because of where the, see how there's a flat spot? right there it won't come this way because it's going to hit the gear all right so there there might be a better way to do it but the way i do it is again you turn the motor until you clear that little thing so let's see right there it would come off right so now it can slide off because that flat blade is not behind the other thing It's trying to cooperate. Well, I've gone about as far as I can go with that. <laughs> I don't know if I can lift the tone arm up off of there. It's hitting the tone arm here, so I really need to get the gear off, but not the middle thing off. There we go. It's coming off. Or at least move back. We're getting closer, folks. I don't want it to get on that damn. Damn. All right. So it goes like that. I need to keep in mind that the little groove goes on the inside. Cool. All right. And then finally, we can remove the shaft. Bloop. So that's that. And with that removed, that whole piece will come out. So that's as far as you want to disassemble it. Disassemble it. Okay, so first we took the gripper arm off and then we had the gears to contend with. We took the bolt off the end. We took the outside gear off. We took the inside gear off, which was tough. We slid the shaft out and then we took the body out. So first thing we need to do is clean up the stuff that's still on the jukebox a little bit. And uh, then we just put it back in the reverse order. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit um, with whatever kind of degreaser you want. Now, the level of cleaning is up to you. If you're doing it at your house, you may want to get it really nice and spick and span. You know, I'm more interested in just, you know, as long as it's uh, moving and running well. So cosmetically, it doesn't really matter to me that much. I cleaned it up a little bit, but it's not perfect. If you spend another hour on it, you can get it looking really nice. I don't really have that luxury with the way we do it, but... Uh, we're going to put everything back together. So the first piece, the last piece we took off was this little housing. So basically, you want, you definitely want to get the inside completely clean, get everything super clean inside. The outside is not as important. Now the edges need to be really clean because if there's a bunch of grease or oil on that, it'll you know cause friction with this edge. So we'll put it back, and then we've got our. If I can find it our little shaft here that goes in it got it all cleaned up so here's the fun part you're gonna get if you look online you're gonna get tons of different opinions on what kind of oil what weight of oil what kind of grease some people put grease in it uh, to put in it what I put in it and what I've seen a lot of people suggest is 20 weight oil right so if you get like three in one oil, something like that, that's a little thin. 
but the three in one also makes a 20 weight oil and they sell this at Lowe's so some people would suggest this is a little bit too light of an oil but whenever we've got a problem with stuff gumming up I'm not real gung-ho on putting really heavy thick oil on it right okay so here's the most important one that inside gear is a pain because you've got to make sure you get it in just the right spot to where it meshes up with the gear on the bottom so I'm gonna turn it back there may like I said there may be an easier way of doing this for instance if you have the motor disconnected it's easier to turn this gear but I just turned it with the uh, the little neural knob on the bottom of it, whatever it's called. Put some more oil on it. So remember I was saying that I had to remember that this goes on the inside. So basically when this thing turns, these teeth have to line up just right. snapped up in there our center shaft is still turning good still doing its thing okay so you see how that pin of this thing has to go in there right so the important part is I'm gonna have to take you down so you can see it again the important part is when that thing turns that long blade that long tooth has to lay down where there's room for the long tooth. You see what I mean? If you were off one gear, whenever that turns around, it would not lay down in that hole. You know what I mean? It would hit a tooth. There'd be a tooth in the way there. So you just want to make sure you get that where it lines up right. So we've got it where it lines up right. And then this pin should be back in there just like we left it. So let's mount the last gear on and then that little nut. Okay, so you got a similar situation with this one. It can only go two ways, but that middle shaft can spin anyway, you know? So it could have spun, well, you know it spun out of the way because we, uh, we moved everything, right? So it's a similar thing. I think I'll lay it... I'll move it farther back to where it was so that I can see how the gear is supposed to line up. And you see how that stops spinning after it goes a while? That's because that one gear catches this gear and makes it start spinning. So this gear stays in place until the gear gets around to it to grab it. I know a lot of this probably just sounds confusing, but you'll figure it out. Take lots of pictures. Rewind the video again. So see, I'm getting the gear to line up perfectly so that whenever it spins that big tooth will go in the big hole right and then we're gonna spin the little cam there that'll grab it make sure I'm putting it on the right way I'm not so sure if it matters if you put it on backwards but if I can help it I'd rather not Well, there is another way. You could probably you might be able to pull it on with the uh, screw. What do you think? Will that work? Damn right, that'll work. Get some more freaking oil in there <laughs> all right so we are where we need to be I believe yeah I think we're good I believe we've got it people I think we got it Right, time to put the bow back on.
Let's put the bow back on, people. Or try to. What do you think? Is it going to work? Well, it won't work like that. Oh, you know what? I had to lift it a little bit, didn't I? You'd think I'd remember all this stuff. Let's lift it back up a little bit. Again, if you don't, if you, you can unbolt the motor and it makes it where you can just turn this stuff by hand, but I kind of like just leaving it hooked up. That way I know it's all how it is. Mm. Come on, it's your home. There you go. All right. Nice and loosey goosey, just like we want it. In this instance, at least. All right, let's put the uh, little arm thing putting some freaking oil all over it slide that back down in there now there is a it's going through that little middle shaft that we already put in <laughs> now I get to dig it back out of the basket all right. So this is going to go like that. All right. This is going to go in this side. Maybe. Let's see if we can get it started. Yeah, so we got it started. close people we are close on it come on you sucker this may be the only time that it's appropriate to actually beat on the thing out of all the times that I've been beating on it this may be the only time that you're supposed to beat on it I think we've got it in the right spot how the hell did I do that? Whew. All right, let's see if we can get it to set. Should I be using my pin punch on this, people? Yeah, I can barely feel it. I thought I had it. So we made some uh, adjustments to where it picks up the record. Messed with it a little bit. I'm going to turn the volume down so YouTube doesn't kick me off YouTube for playing somebody's song. But uh, basically we're just looking to see if it picks up and hangs up the record. Since we're all cleaned up and oiled up. Like I was saying earlier, there may be a better way to do all of this, but this is just the way we do it. So he grabs the record, bam, lays down the needle, everything's cool. Alright, so it's playing it good, so we're going to cancel the record, make sure it hangs it up good. See how it pulled in before it lifted up? Just how you want it. So the, if, if you're all gummed up, what it'll do is it'll kick up first and then pull in above the record. Uh, we'll do it one more time just so you can. So it, it, it'll also, whenever it picks up the record, it should pull in and grab the record and then move. If it's all gummed up, sometimes it'll move first just from the torque of the 
gears and stuff. So it pulls in first and then lifts up, lays it down. And then whenever it cancels, watch how it, pull, it pulls straight across. All these You'll see these gears start moving, but, in, but, but if, if it's all gummed up, the, just the gears moving will make it twist a little bit because that crap is grabbing it. If you're, if you're good and oiled, everything's lubricated the way it should be, and you're clean enough, it'll go and then pick it up. And that's how it grabs the record. So there you go. Now, if you've been watching our series on this jukebox, I've got a few other things I have to do. Uh, I've got to work on the lights and things like that. But uh, this is just a good little capsulated video of how to take that thing apart and put it back together. So I hope this saves thousands of Rockola jukeboxes. If you look on YouTube, there may be other videos, maybe other people have, uh, that have been doing this a lot longer have put up better ways of doing it but that's the way we do it and as you can see our way works great so <laughs> leave your comments below uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and we hope you're able to fix your jukebox with it we'll see you on the next video